This week, we've assembled a group consisting of teachers, parents, and education advocates for a special Take Note edition of Common Grounds. It's moderated by Take Note's Tim Holman at Mother Earth Coffee. The subject, school choice. Parents are crying out for something different, and we're not delivering. In, in your opinion, what makes a good school uh, and sort of what are your quality indicators? You have to have parents that are saying, what are the values that we have as a family? How best does my particular student or students learn? And what environment then are we seeking to make sure that their needs are met? I really think it, it starts with great teachers. Mm -hmm. um, having great, highly effective, high quality teachers in our classrooms is just you know, the, a solid foundation and the basis that all of our students, I think, in Kansas City deserve. Um, and then after that, it's about creating an environment that uh, encourages that love of learning um, and also helps, you know, really motivate students while also help, helping them kind of work through any questions or, you know, it, encouraging the curiosity. When my husband and I were touring different schools, um, the, the public school by our, right by our neighborhood, there were six kindergarten classes. And so, you know, one of the things I loved about St. Pat's was there was one. And we got to know every child in that class and all the parents in that class, and we're actually very good friends now. So I thought that was, um, that's just been a wonderful experience. What are some of the differences that you all know, uh, that you noticed between uh, public, uh, private, charter, and homeschooling models? A lot of the high performing schools start out with all of these kids and end with this very concentrated focus that's been within their model. So if I had 200 kids, in fifth grade, and by ninth grade, they went down to 90. Then I should have a high-performing cohort of kids because I have literally weeded out everyone that fit into the model. But the question is, did they do what's best for all kids? And then I know a lot of people, when they go to buy homes, they look at the school districts that those homes are in. I kind of did the opposite end of that. I actually didn't look at the school districts when I bought my home. I actually went to find my parish first. So. Because I was very interested in that before ever having kids. So um, for me, whether it's right or wrong, something that I strive for every day now is I just want an environment where my children um, are taught how to be good people, how to form good relationships with people, how to be respectful and, and those kind of environments. I mean, the, ac the academics, of course, are very important and the technology, but to me, it's not... I don't know, I'm always wondering every day when I pick up my kids, what, what was their behavior like today? There have been a lot of articles, the New York Times ran an article on how in Detroit all your choices are bad. You have the bad failing public schools that are even now worse because they've been uh, deprived of funding and students, but that the, the options that they were given didn't solve the problems and weren't forced to be better. So I think that's, a, that's something that concerns a lot of us. We find people withdrawing from public school to homeschool, not because they want to homeschool, but they think it's best for their family. And, yes. and for whatever reason, it might be, it could be uh, fear uh, sometimes, I mean, or it could be uh, just a faith-based type situation, or just the fact they, they don't like uh, how exhausting it is for their kids and the peer pressure. And so I think one is that what we found though is that the schools that seem to be most successful and as defined by the parents are people that have more parental involvement because when parents take ownership of the education you have better success because the parents are invested. The word bad, 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 um, it, 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 it jogs my memory because I had a student who came to our school on the kindergarten level in third grade and the, the way he saw himself was bad. Or they look at the kid across from them and say that kid is bad but I'm good because that kid's bad. I go to a bad school, not recognizing the kid looks like them, right? And so I think we really need to begin to put some words to bed because they have tied into the identity of how our kids see themselves. And I think when we look at school choice, that becomes one of the things that we need to be very clear and specific about, like what language are we pouring into children so they can begin to shift how they identify themselves so that they can go out and choose their own destiny. Helping children create the, their own environment, mm -hmm. you know, helping them mold whatever situation they're in, helping give them skills 
to make it what they want it to be because that's what they're going to find when they get out into whatever workforce they decide to get into. Um, they're going to show graduation rates. I think you also need to talk about attrition rates. Yes. Or what happens to special education children? Do you yeah. provide special education services at what levels? You know, only mild special education services, or are you able to help children who have deeper needs? And I'm not sure how often that information gets conveyed, and I think that's a very important part. And you want kids to land somewhere where they can stay. The more information we can get out in, in easy to navigate and easy to access um, portals is the, one of the best ways we can just kind of help students and families find the school that's going to be right for them.